Hey everyone, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. All right, so we just got some new information about T-Mobile Gateway. Uh, those that are familiar have been following this gray gateway we kind of call the trash can um, has been really the only one available in 2021. And we heard rumors that a new one was coming out and now we have some information uh, or details about it. So I'm gonna talk about uh, external antennas on that one, I'm gonna talk about some of the port forwarding, double NAT, all the type of issues that we've seen with this current one, if it looks like these are going to address it. This here's the user manual for it, so I'll scroll through that and we'll talk about it. And we'll talk about some other things as far as what uh, is actually very promising about this that it can do that this gateway cannot do. So I'll go through and touch base all of those. If you wanna see other content about T-Mobile Home Internet, what I want to say about it, our tips and tricks, Check out the rest of my channel. I have a lot of T-Mobile stuff as well as a bunch of other things completely unrelated to T-Mobile. So to start with, the any device that is released out there has to be filed with the FCC in the US and that requires details and testing information on the gateway. So um, that's how this information was found. I have to give a shout out for the T-Mobile report for um, posting this up and then I did some reading. I pulled um, the data myself from FCC and I'm looking at um, more detail to see what I can find. So let's dig in and see what there is. All right, so here is the user manual that they uploaded to FCC. And you can see it has a model number here of KVD21. And then it later also gives you the manufacturer here. Um, so our KDN Technology Corporation out of Taiwan, they build other devices, um, I think also for um, Verizon, uh, Fios, and other things as well. So they're a known manufacturer uh, that's out there. This has a lot of kind of your standard information for setup and talks about, you know, um, what type of interface it has, the app, the ideal location to, to put it, um, you know, how to connect devices to it, as well as some other troubleshooting and um, uh, help information in there as well. So if we go down to kind of the good stuff, you can see the backside, and I guess this is the not so good stuff, but I have a workaround already in, in the work. So there is no external antenna port. It actually has no more ports than the trash can has. It has two ethernet ports. It has a USB-C, now they call it a LAN port on this one. So maybe that's indicator that it is going to have some capability there as far as um, you know some communication right now the USB port on the gateway is just a power port and so people power their cooling fans from there and then this one has a uh, USB-C power delivery port as well so now instead of having the more um, uh, typical round power port of the olden age this has followed through with kind of the current generation of electronics and using USB-C for the power port as well so that's all it has on the back there of it. Um, and then the um, here's another picture of in color instead of just the um, the graphics there. Then it's the same thing. It has an LCD screen. This LCD screen is not touch screen, so it has physical buttons down below it that you press. It looks like they still have an interface for you to get your uh, text messages actually on the device. And it says they might send things like outages on there. Um, now here is, it has a single screenshot of the web user interface and that is actually the same address as currently, it's that 192.168.12.1 and this one is really disappointing looking. There, there has, um, or there is basically, basically no information on there other than uh, you're connected to the internet or you're not. And then you have the the one, or, you know, the out of five bars for signal quality, and then your firmware serial number and how long it's been up. But the only promising thing after reading this, you scroll down, there's a note that says the advanced settings are not available with this version release of the web GUI. So that implies in a later version that there will be more um, settings available. So the downside is we don't know exactly what those settings are. I know from some past interviews with T-Mobile executives that have gone on in the media, they have admitted to 
the um, desire from customers to have more options there, both with the settings as well as the different uh, hardware gateways. So I have to believe they're gonna start opening up things like uh, bridge mode and port forwarding on these. And it's just a matter of will it happen right away when this gets released or not. And I don't know the answer to that just yet. Here's how you take the SIM card out. Uh, it's easy and then there's a um, resetting port. The uh, kind of, um, I, you know, I, I don't know if I should call it concerning, but you know, for troubleshooting, it has overheating in here, which is probably, um, I guess it's not the biggest flaw. There's lots of flaws with, with a trash can, but it's one of the things that a lot of people talk about, and that is uh, overheating and how does that affect the modem. It starts to turn off features. You start to lose um, good bands or good towers, and ultimately it will start to shut down uh, altogether. So it has a mention of overheating in here, and um, you know I, I'm hoping that it has better uh, cooling than the gateway does. Here's where he's talking about text messages. And then let's get down. It does give you a little bit of the tech specs. You know, it tells you that this thing weighs two and a half pounds. Gives you dimensions in millimeters here. And then, um, you know, tells you that uh, operating temps and Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. It does have a 4x4 for both uh, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Uh, so th th that's good uh, for sure. And that would help enable things like a mesh network, for example, if um, if they come out with beacons or nodes out there as well. And then for the mobile bands, it's the same bands as you can get with the the current trash can. But there's one key feature that it can do that the trash can can't, and that is that it can aggregate to 5G signals instead of aggregating just a 5G and a 4G. So that promises a lot more bandwidth capability. And that was something else that T-Mobile recently talked about in an interview was uh, releasing that. And that's something I mentioned in my one year um, full story review of the T-Mobile. I just released that a couple of days ago. I talked about that they mentioned that that is going to happen. And this new gateway allows users to, to take advantage of the current trash can does not allow that so uh, that's something that i would look forward to in getting this new gateway now if we go and we dig into the actual pics we can get more pictures of the test unit that um, was sampled for this fcc and you can see it versus um, a scale here of all the different sides this is just the external of the unit Obviously, it's very um, simple. It's just a black box, you know, black um, rectangular cube, basically, uh, with some holes on the um, the back and the sides for uh, cooling. Now, to get more in the details, let's hop into the interior pictures here. I'll start at the top for everyone. That's the SIM card. And then here's when you first take apart the casing. It looks like it's uh, snapped together is what it appears to be. Um, you know, there might be some hardware in there, but this black, <clears throat> black thing in the middle is the screen. And then once you pop off the screen, um, here, let's see, that's some little part. I'm not even sure what that one is, but once you pop off the screen, now you can see two separate circuit boards. And then you can start to see some of these different antennas, Bluetooth antennas, GPS antennas, cellular antenna. Well, it's kind of hard to tell, but on the left side here, this right here is the, let me zoom in maybe for you guys. Get rid of these ads. All right, so this here is the circuit board that has the U.FL ports that you plug your antennas in. So the good news about this is it has the same connectors as the gateway does. So that means if you have an antenna set up and you're using it on your gateway, you can transfer it to this one is what it uh, certainly appears like. And I, I don't see a reason why that would not hold true. So that is the upside to it. The downside is they don't have an external port out there yet. So that's 
that is disappointing here is the different antennas you can see again gps has lte these m m2s uh, one two zero and three and bluetooth uh, so these are the different cellular and wi-fi and bluetooth and gps ones that are plugged in you can see the large heat sink on this side and in this other picture you can see the other heat sink as um, as well on this side so both circuit boards have heat sinks built in but it appears to be passive cooling again i, I didn't see a fan in here uh, unless i missed it so this just gives more pictures of each part confirm the uf um, l connector there it looks very uh, much the same as the gateway one i think there's nothing else really notable here on the uh, internal pictures you know, this just gives you a better look of the heat sink that's in there on both sides. So large heat sinks, um, but really doesn't look like any bigger heat sink than the gateway does. All right, so I'll put some links in here directly to some of these pictures. So if you are a, um, you know, a um, expert on some of these stuff or circuit boards and these modems and chips that are in there, you can go in there and maybe you can add some comments in the video below as far as what uh, you found interesting about these guys. And additionally, if you are even more of a diehard, you know, electrical engineer or really into this cellular stuff, they also um, give out the test report of testing the unit for everything from like interference to reception. And uh, you can dig through these reports as well and see how it performs. So. Overall, you know, this is a uh, upgrade, I would say, to T-Mobile, but it is not uh, everything that we want. And uh, as far as external ports, I will say I will be very, very happy, though, if it just allows me to um, better select what bands I can get. That would be a big improvement if you can do some kind of band locking. And the other, the most desired feature I want is a bridge mode and then I don't have to care about the rest of the features of that gateway I want it to just be a modem and um, then I'll leverage my own personal routers for all of my configs any kind of port forwarding and all that kind of stuff so that is still yet to be seen and as soon as we get one of these guys out and tested we will obviously report back and see how it goes so thanks for watching like the video down below subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more. Thanks.